Matt, thanks for uh, for joining me today and uh, congratulations on moving into the, the new role. Was that something that you've always wanted to do? Yeah, for sure, especially in the last maybe three, four years, it's been something that, that has really focused my mind. So yeah, I, I do want to do do this, be on that side. Um, it's where all of my experience in, in working life lies. It, it's very much so what I know. Um, as in football, uh, and it, it's yeah, being remaining part of, of of football past this point and uh, and onwards is something I'm I'm really intent on doing. And fingers crossed, this is the first step into that. Albeit it's, it's um, a foot in both camps, if you like. But that's something that I think as you gradually become a senior player in the dressing room, you kind of end up on that side uh, or in that position anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really, really glad that the manager saw it in me, and the and, and the management team, the chief executive, the chairman saw it in me to to take on this role. Um, obviously, it'd be a, a big, big hole that Marcus has left, uh, and something I'm you know really going to try as hard as I can to fill from both sides. You know, and you say you've got a foot in both camps, but what exactly changes for you now moving forward? You know, because. Are you going to be the bridge between the players and the management? You know, what, what sort of things are going to happen next season for you? I think it'll definitely be a case of seeing as it, as it develops. Um, who knows how things will happen in terms of um, the playing side of things. I'm still going to be remaining on that side. I'm still going to try to play as many games as I possibly can. But also um, probably be doing that from Saturday within the coaching, uh, coaching coaches room which will be a different, significant change, if you like. Um, uh, so, and then that kind of feedback and, and, and talking to, to the lads, hopefully will be, will, will be quite beneficial in that I'll be very close to the coaching thoughts and also close to the players' thoughts. Um, very much so aware of, of that it's, it's a different scenario being out on the pitch than it is stood on the side of the pitch. And possibly just giving it a, a bit of a, an, an eye uh, not a bird's eye view, but a game's eye view, a pitch eye view of exactly what it's like and the thoughts that people are going through on that pitch and why you do what you do. And sometimes it does, the game looks very different from the sidelines. I'm well aware of that. So hopefully, if on that sort, sort of a bridge, I can kind of give that insight, uh, but also just what the lads are thinking at different times. Um, hopefully. And people will come to me and discuss that and, and I can help people through that whilst also recognising we're a very young group uh, or we will be a young group next season and um, an exciting group of young players who um, some very, very gifted and talented players who hopefully I can have a bit of a... Um, hopefully some of my knowledge to help improve them. Yeah, and like you say, it's going to be a, a young group next season but that could play into our hands almost because we finished the season strong and moving into the next season, whenever that starts, we've still got the core group of players there. You know, the sky's the limit next season really for us, isn't it? Well, you like to think that, that yeah, firstly, the momentum that we've had from, from finishing the season holds us in good stead, but that group of players is still together, very much so. I think 15, 16, 17 of those, of that group will still be with us next season, which... Uh, for sure, there are some clubs in this division and the division above that will be single figures of players that are left over from last season. So, uh, for me, I think that can only benefit us. Um, I think it's something that we strive for and mentioned all of the last season, as we're now saying, calling it, of last season is that continuity, that re those relationships. Fingers crossed we form, form those and we'll continue to form those and, and make them stronger throughout the next part of the season. I think I've the manager had said the other day how well in the last 10 games of the season we finished the season. Um, and the, again, we want to take that momentum into the, the start of the next season uh, with a couple of additions, as there will be for sure. Uh, but it will be the core group of lads that, that again, hopefully the supporters will know what, what that group is. Um, there's always that, that there's always that little moment with, with football uh, clubs in the Football League and, and League One and League Two where there's a big turnaround of players and it takes fans a little bit of time to, to actually get to know the players. But we don't have that this season. It will very much so be that core group. Uh, and again, hoping that everyone at the football club rallies around together 
to achieve what ultimately we want to achieve next season. I was just about to say that actually with the, the core group of players there last season there was such an overturn of players leaving the club and, and players coming into the club. That's the sort of thing that teams in our division are going to experience this season. It certainly is going to stand us in good stead because that core group of players that we've just mentioned have had a season together to bond and, and, and gel and hopefully we can kick on next season now, can't we? Yeah, for sure, and uh, we can't rest on that fact. That 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 is a it's without question for my mind that's an advantage. But we can't rest on that and believe that our academy because we know each other we're, we're going to perform and do well. Um, but for sure, I see that as an advantage that we go into the next season with. Um, it will be down to us and 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 the management team, the coaching staff, and the players themselves all coming together and working as hard as we possibly can. Uh, for whenever it starts throughout the course of the, the next season to achieve what we all want to achieve next season. Uh, and you mentioned earlier that, you know, as an experienced pro, you'll be looking to, to help players um, now you're in this new role. You have played for a, a number of different clubs throughout your career. Is that experience of playing at different levels going to help you in this role? I think the, hopefully the experience of different levels, different managers, um, different players, scenarios. Hopefully you you back you rest on those things to be the things that that you fall back on whenever a piece of advice is needed, whenever there's a tough moment. Those are the times that experience I think comes into to play, and hopefully um, throughout any of those, as I say, tough moments. And, which there always are throughout every season. Hopefully, those little pieces of advice just get us through those, the other side of those, whether that, whenever that might be. Um, I would always, you know, I'd go back to what I first said in that this is where my experience is and this is where my, my knowledge is, if you like. And in any job, you want to have that sound background behind you to then be able to have, I don't know, vindication in what you're saying is what you've experienced. And that is on, in all of the leagues. Um, but at the core of it, it's football. Uh, we all, the fundamentals of football, I think the manager said that uh, all, a lot of the times last season, he's hard work. Uh, and that will be the first focal point of any conversations, any experience or whatever, is we've got to work really, really hard next season. Very, very hard. Be as fit as we possibly can be. I think you saw at the back end of the season that we've just played, scoring late goals, coming from behind in games. They're all of the things and all the characteristics you have to have to be a team that gets gets or does well in a season. Those things are the the important parts of the season that we need to be drumming home. Um, and hopefully, the experience of being in positions where you're you're losing in the 85th minute and you come back and win, and all of those little things, you hope that you can have an influence on. I suppose one of the questions would be, why now? Why? this season, one at the end of next season, why have you decided to take this role up? I, I suppose I feel, um, personally, I've felt ready for a couple of seasons now anyway. Um, uh, and it's just where I'm at. Uh, I very much so enjoy the playing side of things, but I also really enjoy um, helping to improve players around me. And I think I try to do that whilst playing, so hopefully I can do that whilst playing and also whilst coaching and seeing it from a different angle. Um, and it, it just I suppose you never know that it, you can't really say why but it feels right and I'm very very excited about about trying to have as much as an influence uh, and an impact as possible to again get a, get what we all want every person at the football club wants it's quite rare you get that at a football club I think in that um, every single person from top to bottom of every department wants the same thing I think that, that that's a powerful thing and it feels like that's what we have at the football club Um I think going on to what we've all seen and heard from the chairman and Dan and Steph and the manager this, these last three months is what an incredible job those people have done um, in first securing the football club and then positively impacting on thoughts of the next season. I, I'm, I've sat on a lot of meetings in the last three months for, for PFA and EFL things and I, I'm rest assured that's not the case at a lot of football clubs up and down this country throughout all of this. And we should be extremely proud about the club that we have. Um, and that will be a message to, to the, the fans, but also the players in that, you know, we owe these people back a little bit, bit as well for what, what they're doing for our football club at the moment. 
Uh, and again, I go back to that's what the feel of, of everybody together is. Um, and it do, that's a powerful thing. Uh, and again, hopefully um, that, that brings itself a powerful season next season. It must be pretty reassuring though, for, for you guys as players to know that you know, the future of the football club is secured moving into to next season and into the next 12 months because you know, there are players, there are teams that have got uncertainty looming above them. It must be good for, for you as a group to know that going forward, we are secure. That's not an overnight thing either. That's the culmination of 10 or 12 years of, of people that are still here now, I say Dan and Steph, and then the chairman's come in and been such a reassuring voice in amongst all of this. I, again, I think the fans would echo that. Very reassuring with the communication that he puts out to people, and, um, but also reassuring from the fact that you know he's working deadly hard, as, uh, again, as Dan and Steph and, and people behind the scenes, to make sure that the the football club that has been in place for the last 10 years, a sustainable, profit-making football club, um, re returns to, to that model as soon as it possibly can, um, albeit under really testing circumstances. But we should, again, we should be very proud of the fact that this football club runs itself the proper way. Um, when there are certainly football clubs out there now, uh, again, I've heard of many, many tough stories out there that, that are for sure aren't well as well run as this football club is. Listen, it, nobody could have predicted what would have ha has happened in the last three months. Of course, they couldn't. But when people talk about worst case scenarios and and doing things right as football clubs, this is why the club has done it, and this is why the club we should be proud of the way the football club is. Um, and again, from a fans and a players' the point of view, that is so reassuring that that. Um, there aren't talk of massive job cuts. There aren't talk of, of slashing this and slashing that. That's not how the football club works because there are proud, honest people working behind it. And that isn't an overnight thing. That isn't just a, a crisis thing. That's a, a long time of working, doing things the right way. And we should be proud of that. And you mentioned proud people working at the club. Daryl the gaffer, he's he's a very proud man, you know, wears his heart on his sleeve, you see from the sidelines. I mean, you would have worked with him every day near enough last season, you know. What are your thoughts moving into to working alongside him now rather than, you know, taking advice off him as as a player, you'll be, you know, receiving advice off him as, as somebody who's been in the game for a long time as a manager? Yeah, I'm really excited. I'm really excited about it. The, it the manager's a serial winner. The promotions that he has, and um, he's desperate to win for this football club. A person, the manager is as somebody who eats, breathes, sleeps football and winning football matches. And, and I want to get that across because he hurts so bad when we lose football games. He hurts up there with more than any person I've seen hurt about a football game before. He's so passionate about passionate about winning games for this football club that. He truly is the right person to be in charge of this next chapter and this next charge. I, alongside the manager, Brian Dutton, again, another person who's so passionate about winning games of football, however that might be, uh, and improving things. So for, for me, it's a fantastic opportunity to learn from these people, to bring little ideas that I've seen as well. but um, And then to be given that opportunity by the manager, a well-respected um, manager in the game. I'm very proud of that as well. Um, so, yeah, for me, I'm just delighted to be given the opportunity by the manager and, as I say, the, the, the board and and, uh, and everyone involved there um, and want to do as much as I can from my side of things to, to help out that charge. And I mean, whilst Daryl doesn't really like speaking about what is possible to be achieved next season, but... From inside the players' camp, what do you guys think can be achieved next season? Um, again, you go into any season with, um, we're not going to shout from the top of the roof, you know, shout ladies to say we're doing this next season, we're doing that next season, but we will quietly go on about our business, um, doing things the right way and trying to achieve what we think we're desperate to achieve. Um, and what we will say is we'll be doing everything we can to do that. Um, in terms of predictions, never going to do, never going to say that um, in a million years. But we're all desperate to achieve what we can next season. 